remember as a kid spending hours and hours playing those classic, now nostalgic hack and slash games where you've been descending into this hellish abyss level by level and you always wish that you could have a board game just like this then maybe this is something for you Down to Hell, the board game for one, two, four players, where you can go solo against hordes of demons and monsters, or you can play with your friends and against your friends. My name is Chris from Silverlings Games, and in this video, I'm going to explain to you how to play Down to Hell. Before I get really deep into the rules, I'm going to briefly explain all the components of the game and you would have a bit of a glimpse of what's going on. So this is what we have here, is a uh, hero dashboard. So this is the dashboard for the night, this is the mini for the night, this is the dashboard. And here, as you can see, there are some um, red crystals and yellow crystals. So, and they're placed on two orbs. The red orb here is called a Vitality Orb, and Vitality Orb is, well, it's where you have your life, but this is also uh, what you can do in the game. Uh, let me explain. Uh, in, the, in the game there is a phase, it's called a preparation phase, where you prepare for what's going on, and you assign points to those slots, to movement, to defense, to action, you know, and, and then, it's a bit tricky part here because basically what you do is you trade your life for what you can do, what you can perform in the game after. So that means that if you overspend those gems here, you might it might turn out that you don't have really enough life remaining and you could be a bit in trouble later. Once you assign those points here, they become frozen. Then you have your turn and uh, and where you spend your points from from defense, from movement, from action, and they go down here to this uh, slot when you spend your points. And then at the end, at the end, there is a regeneration phase where you where you put them back again, and your life is coming back. And all those points that were not spent, they also come back. So you see, using the dashboard is about balancing what you can do to not to spend too much life, um, to, to have this overall balance of your character. And this orb on the right, uh, depending on the hero, it could be blue, it could be yellow, it could be also green. Uh, th those are your mana points. And mana points are straightforward. You just spend them directly from the, from the, from the, uh, from the orb. Sometimes you can also assign one point here each turn to charge this ability. But when you pay in the game, you just simply put them into the spend slot, just like this, and in regeneration, some of them, they will come back. Let's take a look at equipment cards. So there are a few types of equipment cards. Some of them, they go only with your hero, and some could be used by all classes. And it works as such, that you store them here in your backpack, and then you can equip your cords. So, for example, I will equip sword. And as long as I have any kind of sword attack, this equipment is active and it has a result. So, for example, here I might reroll each attack anytime. And once I played all my swords attack, this is destroyed. The equipment is destroyed and can be only repaired when you're back on your starting portal. Some equipment cords they uh, can be equipped and some they can be played right away. And in your turn, you're able to play one equipment card or equip one, one, one card. So it goes such that you have your backpack or players, they don't know what they have in your backpack. You just go, okay, I'm going to, boom, regenerate a few vitality points, for example. So this is how equipment works. With the dashboard comes a skill tree 
Oh, skill tree is quite straightforward. This is a tree where you unlock your skills or your abilities uh, when you gain experience. And to do that, you simply place a purple cube in those slots one by one, and you can only go from the bottom to the top for each truck. Uh, sometimes you can see that they're like uh, little numbers here like this. Some, some they don't have this, some they have. And it means that when you unlock the skill, you take that many cards for that skill. I was talking about the skill tree. And now let's talk about skills themselves. So uh, here are uh, action cards. In action cards, they're divided into attacks and uh, spells. Spells do I have those icons. Attacks have a sword or a um, crossbow, uh, depending if it's a range attack or a melee attack. And uh, once, of course, once you unlock them, you take an equal number uh, of cards that are told in the skill tree. So for example, have you, here you have five cards of this attack, this is swing. And then when you play them all, when you play them all, uh, it means that your uh, attack is basically, it ends. And uh, if you have weapon equipped to that attack, it's destroyed. Um, and how to perform the attack, it's, uh, it's quite straight, straightforward. So here you get one uh, red orb, this is one vitality point. So it means that you have to pay, pay one vitality point from your dashboard to a spend slot. And then you can perform this attack. And it says that uh, here is the icon of a sword die, and this is a sword die. And then, you, for example, you have sometimes also uh, some extra abilities of that attack. And then it says that you can reroll that attack if you pay one mana point. And this is exactly just straightforward how it goes, one damage, for example. Let's talk about map. The whole map consists of tiles. And this, those are modular tiles. And this is something very nice because each time you play the game, you have very different dungeon because it's generated randomly. At the beginning of the game, you just take the tiles that are required for the scenario, you shuffle them, you put them face down, and then when you enter the tile, you flip it, and then you see what's going on here. So this first one here is a terrain tile and it consists of uh, three spaces. Those three spaces, they all have uh, two entrances. And each tile, uh, most of them have some kind of ability that changes the game. Sometimes you might find also something like this. For example, this is firewall. So when the tile is revealed, you place the firewall token and you have to sacrifice live actually to, uh, to, to pass it through. Um, there are also, uh, sometimes you might find the red line like this with the red hand, and it means that you cannot pass this line. It's impenetrable, right? And uh, at the end, uh, also most of the tiles, they have this spawning zone where you put spawning tokens to keep track of monsters that appear in the game. Uh, then uh, in Britain, they have this portal tile, and portals are uh, important because they... Uh, you start on the portal and sometimes there is also a portal in the game inside the map and it allows you to teleport from one tile to uh, one portal to another and for example regenerate your skills mana and vitality points and at the end there is there are um, boss tiles they're a bit different and uh, they also always have a uh, white mark because terrain tiles are uh, red and boss tiles, they have a, a white icon. And once you flip it, you just know which boss you're going to fight now. Now let's go to monsters. Well, in the game, you have uh, all kinds of monsters that are represented uh, on those uh, standees because all monsters, there are standees and all heroes, depending on the version of the game, they're minis. And for those monsters, there is a dashboard for them. And as you can see, each of them, they have, they have number here. Yeah, this is number two. And this dashboard is just simply to keep track of monsters' life. And at the, at the top here, you uh, have the ability of the monster. So, for example, 
Uh, he performs his attack with the yellow monster die. Uh, there is his speed, there is his life, and how much experience you gain if you slain that monster. Sometimes there is also a special ability of the monster, but this is the weak one, so it's not that uh, dangerous, but uh, some monsters like the Otip, that is the uh, highest in a tier, uh, he, for example, retaliates each time and is a very deadly monster. Talking about monsters, this is a spawning deck for monsters. As, uh, as you can see, it, um, it tells you how many monsters and what they do uh, when they enter uh, the game. So, for example, when you, there is a first tier spawning, there is uh, one of those guys, then there are, there's again one of those guys, and at the tier three there are two of those guys, and they get extra movement, for example, here. Sometimes there is no spawning at all, it's called silence, and uh, sometimes, for example, they gain extra life, or there is like ability I said before, that they retaliate and they're very deadly. And then, finally, bosses. This is the boss dashboard. So once you enter the tile with the boss, you flip it over, you place the standy of the boss, and you take the deck of cards for monster behavior. And well, you shuffle it, and then you put it on the right side. Then you take two cards, and you reveal the first one. And this is the current action. And this is what's going to be next. And then you remember I talked about um, priority tokens and the player who is fighting with other players and has the lowest priority token, like lowest number, he can have a sneak peek on that card and see what's going to be next and prepare for the attack. But he doesn't reveal that to other players. Then when that action is done, it goes right here. This action follows here. There is a next card and then we flip the current action again. Here I prepared a, a scenario for you. It's called a lonely path because there is only one path leading to a boss in the end. And it's already revealed because it's the only boss on the map. So we can see who we're uh, against uh, at the end of the scenario. And this scenario particularly is for two players. They play uh, um, together, like they cooperate to defeat the boss at the end. And as you can see, the scenario is somewhere now in the middle. So, um, as I mentioned before, there are five phases in the game, and we're going to go through all of them right now to see how the game overall works. So, uh, uh, first of all, it's the spawning phase. So, as you can see here, each tile has a certain number of um, spawning tokens, and we're going to take each of them out of the tile and draw the card for that. So, this is silence. So no monster is coming, then we take one token from here, it's a uh, tier one and it's one treeman coming here and we're going to take this fellow with the lowest number and we're going to put here so no monsters can come here anymore because there are two monsters in one space right now and for the third tile it's bam and this is going to be Otep and Otep is a powerful one so the lowest number is number two we put him here. And as you can see, he is also blocked here by those roots. So before he comes to our hero, he needs to destroy the root. And uh, that would be actually decided by dice. So if he won't manage, he will actually stay there and he can maybe block other monsters to come. Uh, okay, so once the spawning is done, then we, as a hero, we can respond to that. And we're going to um, assign our uh, points, our vitality points and our mana points uh, especially vitality points to a slot. So, um, and this is called preparation phase. So in the preparation phase, I'm going to take, uh, for example, what do, what do I need uh, as a knight? And uh, important at that step, we also exchange, exchange priority tokens with players. So I'm going to be first now. And that means that I'm going to be uh, in the first, like, I'm going to be chased by monsters in the first place. And I'm going to also move first in that whole round. Okay, so once that is done, I can also uh, take cards. I am able to draw two cards. I'm going to take one uh, attack and one, oh, that's beautiful, one's going to take one spell because I'm going to need that chart probably, maybe. 
So this is what I have now in my hand. Okay, I can put it aside. Uh, and I'm going to assign points. So I want to reveal that tile, but I know that some monsters are going to come and I will have to pay penalty for that. So I'm just going to put two to vitality points on movement and maybe I'm going to defend, so maybe one, and rest is going to go for uh, action. And for that, I'm going to take all my cards. I'm going to see what I'm, what I'm facing. So maybe the autop will, no, no, the autop won't come because actually when he destroys those roots, uh, he will stay on, in that space. So I will have to just deal with one three man over there because he has one movement point and that will be enough to come into that space. And because he's weak, I think that he already lost some life because this is the number three. It's so number three is uh, here, and uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, he already lost some life, so he's only on one life, so that would be quite easy to uh, knock him off. All right, so for that, I'm going to just maybe need, well, just in case something terrible happen, I'll just put two on my, on my action slot, and I'm going to charge my ability one. Okay, and this is... For the Demon Hunter, this is the same story, and now I will go as the knight. Uh, okay, so this is the end of phase number two, the preparation phase. Now we're going to go with the uh, monsters phase, the phase number three. So monsters, they go first. And now, we see we search the monster with the highest uh, level and the lowest number. So the highest is Otep. So Otep is going to attack this lady, the Demon Hunter, Demon Hunter. And then he's going to deal with the knight. So probably let's say that he was able to destroy those roots, and the next uh, round he'll be able to chase me. Um, now there is a mage. Mage has an attack, a range attack that can go through two spaces. So it's a one two. So I'm in his range. So maybe I actually did a mistake putting only one two into defense. But let's see how it's going to come. So I'm going to take a die now. I'm going to roll it. So this is the red die. And that's actually one. So he knocks me off by one. So I'm going to put it here, but I don't worry really that much because this is just one line and it's going to go back then in the regeneration phase. And okay, so he shot me. And now the rest of the monsters. So those four guys, I'm looking the one with the lowest number. So this is number one, two. So number one, number two. This guy actually fall in a trap set by Demon Hunter. So, and this is, so whenever this guy just steps into the space of the trap, the Demon Hunter roll the die and this is one damage. And actually this guy is dead. The guy with number two is dead. So he is being put on the map and the token as well. Uh, for the rest of the guys, this guy is going to, guy with number three is going to attack me and that guy is going to that space. And now this guy attacks me. So again, I take the, Red die, I roll it, it's one. I'm going to take it off from the fence and I'm going to, yeah, it's absolutely blocked. And this is done now with monster space. Now, in the end, it's turn for our heroes to respond. And uh, my knight now, you're in that turn, is going to knock this guy off probably and then go and reveal another tile. So I'm going to go, uh, Okay, I also I can look what uh, what weapons I do have at, equipped, and here is uh, my Ulfbert sword, and this sword actually makes me re-roll one of my attacks, my, my my current attack, and this ability can also stack if I have something, uh, some other attacks like for example, uh, um, uh, I think it was uh, yeah swing swing that I can re-roll uh, for the cost of one mana, so actually it's uh, it's quite safe to play this way, All right so. As I said, maybe, maybe just Iron Fist is going to be enough to knock the guy off. So I'm putting that on the stack with other Iron Fists. I'm paying one uh, mana point and I'm taking uh, one uh, Vitality point from the action slot. I played that and let's see what is the result. So I take my Sword Die and it's zero. And just because of that weapon, I can re-roll that. And let's see if we can go any better this time. And yeah, it's two. So the guy is dead. So when he is dead, once he's dead, I can now take one point from my movement slot, put down here, and reveal the new tile. Bam. 
And in this scenario, actually, it really pays off to go as fast as you can throughout the whole map, just to this portal right here, because it's very close to the boss. So you're really bleeding out through all that way, but just when you come here, you can just easily jump over here and go to that boss. And then at the very end, at the very end, is the regeneration phase. And in your regeneration phase, you just take all the, to all the points that were, were not spared, they were just frozen throughout the whole round, they go back again into orbs. And depending on the level of my hero and what skills do I have unlocked in my skill tree, I can regenerate two or maybe three points. At this step of the game, it are three points. So I'm going back to this. And of course, I also regenerate my, my uh, mana points. So boom, this is where I finish.